What I want to do in this video is I want to continue on with uh, the outline that I was following before and uh, just get a little bit deeper into it and we'll see how far we get into it. Um, so let me share my screen. And so Columbus's uh, second and third voyages. Okay, the second voyage, he discovers some, quote unquote, discovers some new territories. Uh, and there's a nice graphic in Pex exterminate all the brutes that that um, gives a good pictorial representation of that. And then, um, and that's for a few years, a little bit longer than his first voyage. And the third voyage uh, from 1498 to 1500. Now, what's very interesting here is that in the midst of that third voyage, so he was he was always like the governor of uh, these new territories out there, Hispaniola and uh, the larger area that 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 uh, indicated um, to the crown. But uh, in the midst of this third voyage, when he was actually out in the colonies, uh, he was imprisoned. He was uh, captured and imprisoned for tyranny. Now he is uh, charged with tyranny, uh, not against the indigenous population, but against the Spanish colonists. And so his treatment of the colonists was so bad that he was actually in prison and put on trial uh, for tyranny against uh, Spanish citizens. Uh, now, I mean, uh, the indigenous people were, uh, were considered uh, technically Spanish citizens, but uh, the documentation indicates that uh, the real uh, abuses that they considered were those of people born in Spain. And uh, so he was in prison, taken back to, to Spain. He was judged out in Hispaniola at the Audiencia, the royal audience, which was like the Supreme Court out in the colonies, out in Hispaniola, and um, convicted. Uh, but when he came back to Spain, he was quickly released. Uh, however, his reputation was thoroughly tarnished uh, because of this. And he never re really recovered his reputation after this. Uh, Francisco de Bobadilla was the judge in uh, Columbus's case out in Hispaniola, out in the colonies, and he wrote a report that was then sent back to Spain, and he was named governor of the Indies when Columbus was, was sent back to Spain. Not long after Columbus is back voyaging out to the Americas again, uh, and he finds himself stranded on Jamaica. Um, and he didn't manage to impress the indigenous people there with his astronomical knowledge because using uh, Abraham Zucato's uh, astronomical charts, again, this is like the astronomical charts of Alfonso X, uh, the astrologer, uh, but these are updated, newer versions of that. Uh, he's able to predict an eclipse uh, that occurred. And of course, that's pretty impressive. Uh, that's that state-of-the-art technology at the time. And uh, he was able to garner the support of these tribes on Jamaica and not get killed, and then eventually he does return to Spain. Uh, then he, he dies shortly afterwards in 1506. Okay, so that's, that's the story of Columbus, uh, you know, in, in broad terms. Um, we have the expulsion of the Muslims right about this time, right about the time of Columbus's fourth voyage, and I talked about that in an earlier video. So this is when the 
racial tension against Muslims is, is intensifying. And of course, Muslims in the Iberian Peninsula in, in the Kingdom of Spain are Moorish, um, North African and darker skinned, um, definitely uh, looking African and, and, uh, and having African characteristics. Um, and so that sort of racial aspect is heightening in, in the Kingdom of Spain back home in the Iberian Peninsula. And right about this time, we have this uh, institution. Now, this is an institution in the sense of like a social, uh, like, the, like the way that sociology talks about institutions, like the institution of marriage uh, or the institution of military service or something like that. Um, this is the institution of limpienza de sangre, the cleanliness of blood. And this is the, the historical fact that Peck really emphasizes in his treatment of medieval Spain is this limpienza de sangre, the cleanliness of blood, and how this is a, an early institution or, or, or the first European institution of uh, racial purity. And, um, and so in order to become a member of the priesthood or have noble title or enjoy military service or even be involved in a guild or be a professor at a university, you had to prove somehow in whatever bureaucratic way that was determined, that you had the appropriate generations of pure blood in your family. So if you have the Moriscos, the newly converted Muslims, or the Conversos, the newly, newly converted Jews, they had to prove that they had enough Christian blood in their family that they could uh, enter a university or serve in the military or whatever the case may be. And so this really hindered certain, uh, well, two ethnic groups, uh, the Moriscos, who were Moors, as, as uh, you know, Moriscos, that's what that means, which were from North Africa and distinctly African in their physical characteristics, uh, also Muslim, uh, you know, ethnically, but um, but definitely had African uh, uh, biological characteristics, and 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 then we have Jews who also, you know, had a certain sort of biological characteristic and. Um, and um, they, they were forced to prove that they had enough Christian blood in their family to, to get a certain job. You know, if, if you were like a shoemaker, you had to join a guild in order to be a master. You had to be certified as a master craftsman by the guild, as I, as I described in the schematic introduction to Marxist political ecology. You had to, you know, you had to be certified by the guild, and and if you can prove that you had enough Christian blood, then then you couldn't be certified as a master, and you couldn't have your own shop. Like this is a severe economic impediment, and this is the time period of burger production. This is right smack dab in the middle of of what I described as burger production, and and so that's a severe uh, impediment, and. Um, and, and this cut against uh, Jews, uh, you know, ethnically Jewish people and ethnically Muslim people, even if they had wanted so desperately to assimilate, to convert, uh, 
to Christianity, Christianity, that wasn't enough. It's like, so it was a very racist, um, prejudicial sort of system. And there's a, a bit of hypocrisy here because Ferdinand, the king uh, of Spain, he was the grandson of a Jew. And even amongst his court, and even as a fellows, but his court in particular, there were lots of uh, there were lots of advisors who were uh, Moriscos and Conversos. Um, but uh, it, you know, enjoying the highest level of power, where whereas peasants or people who are trying to break into the burger class. Uh, being journeymen, apprentices, you know, and trying to make that jump in, it, it, there was a lot of impediment and, um, and then generations of, of lost economic opportunity that followed upon this prejudicial racist, let's be clear, racist um, sort of institution. And Peck, you know, points to this as, as the very uh, beginning of European racism. Okay. Uh, maybe, maybe I should just stop the video there and then I'll continue on in the next video.